Hello there. Thanks for joining me again. Um, it's been a while since I did a video, and I've been trying to get back into the groove because I feel like something that God's having me do. But uh, um, I wanted to share something I feel like He's really been speaking about the last couple days, which has been really, I think, liberating and good direction when it comes to relationships and stuff like that. But uh, the other night I was praying, and I got this picture God gave me of this uh, water, this body of water, and I knew it represented, um, like what the Bible talks about, how we've got the living water that's within us, and you know when we drink of that water being our faith in Christ, that we'll never thirst again, and it talks about that living water flowing from us, and I was seeing like a living body of water, and I knew it represented what's inside us as believers. And I was seeing all of these people represented by smaller bodies of water around us. Some of them were larger, some of them were smaller. And um, God started showing me, he was saying, you know, I'm inside of you. And he said, all of those other bodies of water represent other people and the water is the Holy Spirit. And he was saying, you know, what happens in relationships is we've got relationships from our past or current relationships. And when the thought of that person in our thought life or in our prayer life, when we're not responding to that person in faith, when we're, the thought of a person comes up and we're not acknowledging what Jesus has done for them and praying from that place of faith or even thinking about them from that place of faith, God's saying there's a block in that, the, whether it's a river or a canal or something, between the Holy Spirit flowing in that relationship. And he said that blockage is us knowing each other according to the flesh. It's the things that we're feeling coming off of other people that they're bound by. And like a word of knowledge, for instance, God wants to use our faith to free them up. So say, for instance, I think of somebody just randomly pops into my mind from my past and I'm like, oh man, I don't want to think about that person. It causes me to feel rejection or it causes me to feel anger or whatever. And instead of agreeing with that thought because of the emotion that it brings up, I'm like, you know what, Jesus, I'm going to choose to trust you with that person. I don't care how they, how that, the thought of them makes me feel. I'm going to acknowledge what you've done for them on the cross, God, that you love them, that your grace is surrounding them, and I'm just going to pray blessings over them. I'm not knowing them according to the flesh, which is my perspective of their well-being or where they're at or how they make me feel. I am praying through faith. And God was saying what happens is as we pray that way, we're knowing people according to the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, as opposed to the information the enemy's trying to get us to agree with. As we're praying from that place of faith, he was showing me in the Spirit that water comes out and it starts hitting the blockage that's coming between that person and not only us, but it's blockage that's coming between that person and the fullness of what Jesus has for them. And so he'll allow us to feel those blockages and giving us an opportunity through our faith will come against those blockages to where we're disagreeing with what the enemy is saying about them and that faith will come in and it'll move that mountain. And sometimes it can get, you know, frustrating or sometimes it can get tiring because you're not seeing those things move in some people's lives. So what happens because of our flesh and honestly because of our lack of faith, us functioning out of another spirit contrary to the Holy Spirit, which is usually self-survival or fear or whatever, we give up. And we're like, oh, good luck. Like, you know, God doesn't want me in that person's life. And in reality, we don't want that person in our life because they challenge our faith. And as God matures us, He'll bring up old people from the past that we've had issues with so we can respond to that information in a different way. We can say, you know what? No, God, I'm going to choose to trust you with this person. And then our faith is allowing the Holy Spirit to come through us in the Spirit and break down those walls that are separating them from the blessing 
of God that he wants to use us to speak out and verbalize in their life. And it's just been really liberating knowing that God, in a sense, he gives us only so many people we're going to meet in this lifetime. And he's into restoration and he's into unity. And obviously the enemy's into division. And how God will time and time again give us the opportunity to be a blessing to people in the past because of our immaturity or our lack of faith or whatever um, or just not even knowing you know um, to be a blessing to those people and I just thought that was a cool picture because I was seeing this body of water and when the thought of these people were coming up that water was going out and it was breaking down all of these dams in these relationships to where the body could become one big, huge body of water. And I knew that's what unity in the Spirit looked like. It was the Holy Spirit was free to flow in all of the relationships of our lives. And it was becoming one whole body, like the body of Christ. And I just thought that was a cool picture of how things kind of work in the Spirit you know, and to just encourage you and, you know, God was encouraging me not to, uh, not to get frustrated, not to give up on people, even people from our past that have very real things that are coming against them. And as we're viewing them from the perspective of what Jesus has done on the cross, you know, greater is he within us than he that is coming against them. And believing those strongholds are getting knocked down, even if you don't see them happening instantly, Sometimes those things take 10 years, but not judging the circumstance according to our understanding and believing eventually after that water's hitting that stronghold, it's going to completely wear it out to where that love can flow. And uh, I don't want to cover too many things, but one other thing that God's been sharing right around the same time that really had me thinking, and it kind of ties together with this, is I felt like God was saying, um, I didn't feel like it, but I think I was on a bicycle ride and I heard God say, um, he said, I want you to imagine what it would be like if you were never to meet another person again. And he said, how would that change the way you treat people that you already know and that you're presently in relationship with? And I thought, man, that is such a profound question. Because I think as believers, a lot of the time, we can be looking for the perfect audience or people that will receive us the way that we want to be received or the way that we want to be viewed. And it causes us to kind of bypass the people that God's called us to be a blessing to that we've already met or that we're in relationship to. And I think one thing I've learned, you know, just in my relationship with God is that the Holy Spirit's priority is always the people that we're with. And when we're looking past the people that we're with, we're missing out on what God wants to do in that moment because we're thinking about tomorrow. And we're kind of giving up on the people that are around us because we're actually looking for what we can get from people that we haven't met yet, which isn't love. And I thought that's such a cool question for God to ask because he's saying, I want you to treat the people in your life as if they're the priority, as if you're never going to meet anybody else again. And the people from your past, don't give up on them. I want you to stay in that place of faith and in that place of intercession until you see that breakthrough that you know God wants to bring into the, their lives, whether they're believers or not believers or whatever. Just staying in that place to where you're free to love them because of your faith in Jesus. So I just wanted to share that. And I wanted to share a couple of scriptures that I thought were cool that were just kind of reiterating um, those revelations. Um, I'm naming this video, Don't Be a God Dam, because what happens is we become a dam in those relationships through our lack of faith and kind of giving up on people. We allow the enemy to dam that communication way, that flow of the Holy Spirit water. So uh the first scripture is John 7, 38 through 39 in the Amplified. It says, He who believes in me, who cleaves to and trusts and relies on me, as the scripture has said, from his innermost being shall flow continuously springs and rivers of living water. 
But he was speaking here of the Spirit, whom those who believe, trusted, had faith in him, Jesus, were after to or were afterward to receive. Because the Holy Spirit, you know, wasn't released. That's what it says. For the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Jesus was yet, not yet glorified because he hadn't died on the cross yet and resurrected. And so that was just him re reiterating that water that flows from us is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's not quenched as we're staying in that place of faith because it allows us to love people where they're at because we're not, you know, functioning from another spirit. And then I wanted to share uh, Galatians 6.10. This is the Amplified. It says, So then on occasion and opportunity, open up to us. Let us do good morally to all people, not only being useful or profitable to them, but also doing what is for their good for their spiritual good and advantage. Be mindful to be a blessing, especially to those of the household of faith, those who belong to God's family with you, the believers. And then in the message version, it says, let's, uh, so let's not allow ourselves to get fatigued doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up or quit. Right now, therefore, every time we get the chance, let us work for the benefit of all, starting with the people closest to us in the community of faith. And I think, you know, we'll know the fruit of our faith. We'll know the fruit of our relationship with God, not necessarily by the amount of people that God's using us to impact, but the people that are closest to us. Are they growing in their faith in Christ? And I think it really like simplifies, you know, the things that the Holy Spirit's longing to do in us and through us, through our faith in Jesus, is be a blessing to those that are closest to us. And it really helps because I think it simplifies things when the people around us at any given moment in time become the priority. So I hope that helped. And I'll talk to you soon. <clears throat>